All right, well, we will also add a voice. Don't worry about the view, deep future, even though there are things to worry about. Yet, just pretend, act, try, and not get worried. You are welcome again to the Daybreak Show on Rock City 101.9 FM here in the city of Abekuta Base is the voice of the people's citizens forum this morning. Daily Ayodo. That's my name. And I am Chede Ibonte. Good morning and welcome to the first leg of the citizens forum. All right, we're talking about getting worried. When there is no money in your pocket, you might naturally get worried. When there is no means of you to feed, feed your family, you might naturally get worried. And of course, when there is no money for you to get some basic things, health and other social infrastructure, naturally, you might get worried. We've been in this situation for some time now, at least uh, officially, they will tell us since 2015. But September last year, the National Bureau of Statistics, that is the only official agency of government that gives us what they say, is the accurate data of what is going on within our society. They did tell us September last year that the country has now exited recession. Remember, that began, I'm talking about recession, in 2015 when the Minister of Finance actually confirmed officially around the end of the year that the country is indeed in recession. Okay, we've been talking about out of recession uh, last quarter, 2017. We are almost into the mid quarter, first quarter of uh, 2018. And this present administration uh, is uh, going about priding itself part of the achievement has taken Nigeria out of recession. And so many Nigerians from different quarters have queried that. They've argued for and against if indeed we are out of recession. I will simply throw that question to even though we attempt to answer it ourselves too with our guests. How accurate is it? Do you also think the country is out of recession? Well, they will say when you are arguing formally, scientific, uh, scientific uh, reasons for your defense, they will say it is the statistics that matter. So, those statistics do they really matter to you? And on this occasion, that's what we'll be looking at on the Citizens Forum this morning. Once again, you are welcome. Once again, you're welcome. And part of that statistics that Dele is talking about, according to the NBS report, it also showed that Nigeria is out of recession as the economy grew by 0.55% in the second quarter of year 2017. 0.55%. Of course, uh, those statistics were taken from the different sectors. Uh, they have uh, the oil sector, which is the main uh, avenue for the country to get its money. We look at the agri sector, manufacturing. We look, also look at the electricity sector. We have somebody who is in the business of calculation. Uh, money figures is a chartered accountant, uh, principal partner, be me, Shorunke, chartered accountant. Uh, let me welcome Timothy Shorunke to the program. He's also the auditor of the Abekuta Chamber of Commerce. Treasurer. Treasurer, Treasurer. Treasurer. okay, sorry. Treasurer. Treasurer, Abekuta Chamber of Commerce. Uh, morning, Mr. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, now she just uh, gave us a figure. One of the figures released by the NBA is the country says which is 0.55. I know I'm not uh, good in mathematics, um, but as a general report, I know that's uh, a marginal. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So is that something that, um, how, how would that affect the general production before we go into it sectorally, like she said? Well, um, we need to understand what reception is. It is when we have two or more consecutive negative GDP. And uh, it might look so big that what is GDP? GDP is the market value of all goods and services produced within a country. If we have four quarters in a year, and one quarter is negative, second quarter is positive, third quarter is negative, that's no recession. The negativity must be two or more that's when we record recession. And uh, when we are coming out of something means that 
for the past two three quarters we have had a negative uh, gdp and uh, marginally yes yeah, it will be marginal because if you have minus five for you to get one you need plus five to usurp it and then another one which is uh six to make point minus five to become one marginally we are coming out of it and the uh, recession when it happens as has been happening in the whole world globally it has effect more on the family than even when you say you have come out of recession for example recession can be caused by inflation by unemployment and a lot of factors and when those factors have already hit a family even if you come out of it and don't forget you have said it marginally so the effect will still remain for more time to come on the family but looking at um, 0.55 percent the average on the nigerian economy is it anything to write home about we might not write home about it because we are still feeling the effect but by the definition of recession thank god we are coming out of it and it will take a long time for us to know we are coming out of it but statistically because we have plus and that plus has shown us it's not a recession and for a recession to take place it has to be a negative gdp for two or more consecutive quarter now uh, some people will say all this we've been talking about our grammar they are in the books is this true because the meaning of that probably is that they are not feeling it uh, in all they do uh, again she will give us the sectoral breakdown if you look at um, the oil sector some people will say okay um, the prices of oil are not just up the product itself is not available if you look at agriculture uh, people will also want to uh, gauge it from the price and availability of those things in the market if you look at electricity the same people also want to gauge whether we are hesitating recession or not from the supply of electricity and the ability of what they can make from that uh, electricity supply so how would you want to rate it but first let's have the agri and oil sector growth uh, according to mps statistics okay for the oil gdp which recovered significantly from minus 11.63 percent in the second quarter of year 2016 and minus 15.40 percent in the first quarter of year 2016 2017 to 1.64 percent in the second quarter of year 2017 and it also expanded considerably in the second quarter of year 2017. Then for the non-oil GDP, that only grew at 0.45%, and that's going down from the initial 0.72% in the preceding quarter, and minus 038 in the corresponding period in year 2016. That's for the oil GDP. Okay, can you um, explain what this means to production, to consumers? Don't forget the fact that in 2014, the price of crude oil moved from $110 to about $40, which contributed to uh, to the recession that uh, was recorded uh, globally and uh, which affects uh, Nigeria. And uh, presently now, it has moved up. So definitely that indices uh, will be definitely correct. But in the agricultural sector, you can see that that's where Nigeria's problem is. Pre prior to now, we have been... Uh, uh, importing rice and uh, a lot of uh, agricultural product in which the current government has tried to stop and you can see the massive uh, deployment of uh, investment in uh, especially rice by the present government and the most of the agricultural product uh, well for agricultural uh, indices to get up we see a lot of job to be done and the job we have been doing is not compared it's not comparative to this oil sector Oil sector is being controlled by international, you know, pricing, and uh, which presently now, you know how much the budget was made for and uh, made up, and now it has already been going pretty a lot uh, beyond what the budget is uh, going for. All those one contributed to uh, the marginal one percent uh, increase from the second quarter of 2016, and uh, don't forget the fact that Nigeria is uh, 90 percent of our budget have been funded by oil. And uh, any shaking or any uh, uh, the, any 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 movement in the oil price, more oil price, would definitely affect how it happened in Nigeria. But uh, the most important thing is how it affects human being. And uh, 
they are all paperwork truly. But uh, Nigeria Bureau of Statistics is officially recognized to give statistics. And uh, for the integrity of that office, we must take it for them. But uh, the impact on the people is what we are saying. We need a way out to know this oil, when oil moved from $40 to $50, how will it affect the common man like me? And uh, when agricultural products move from uh, a, a marginal increase to a marginal decrease, how does it affect me? How can I contribute my quota? In agricultural sector, and uh, how can the government use agricultural sector to improve the living condition of people? If all these things are done, then the recession that will come out uh, will not be marginal. Possibly, maybe in some quarters to come, then we can be having uh, like one uh, percent, three percent, and, uh, and so. We, we will be asking you, Mr. Shonke, to tell us, um, educate us, or inform us as to how these things, like we mentioned, affects the pocket, affects the MSMEs, and then the open market, uh, the common market as we, uh, as it were. Uh, again, then can we have what the MBS says on agric growth? Okay, the report by NBS on agriculture, it um, reads that it's strong and positive growth continued and then it had it maintained throughout the recession, and it grew by 3.01% in the second quarter of year 2017, and that's from the initial 3.39% in the first quarter of year 2017, and 4.53% in the second quarter of year 2016. Now, that's about the biggest growth mm -hmm. of all the sectors in the agriculture sector, and then it was consistent. Uh, and persistent in its uh, growth. The use of the word paperwork now, are these two not paperwork? Well, if we go to the market with uh, five baskets of, of, of paper, and uh, today, and then tomorrow you see 10 baskets of paper, I think uh, there is a marginal increase. Before all these statistics are recorded, they have seen something. And we might not be able to understand the basis of calculating it, but since the um, agency is, is um, with the responsibility, saddled with the responsibility of doing that, let's uphold their integrity that the figure is right. Because there are some. No, we, we are not querying it. Good. Neither are we quarreling Good. with those statistics. But Good. what we want to see is its effect, the reality, it down the road like we say, in the pockets and in the homes. That's what we are trying to find out. Uh, those things, are they really interpreted in this area that I've uh, talked? Is this the same picture it's painting? It's not the same picture. See the rise that is being generated by um, a boy state. It's, it's not the same thing uh, now to the previous year 2000. See the rise being generated by seen being generated by Ogun State. It's not the same rise of five years ago, of uh, compared to present. Uh, one of the effects of recession is inflation. Inflation causes recession when there are general prices increase of products. Don't we still have inflation in the market? Yeah. Definitely, we still have inflation, but at least it has been regulated. They are working. The government is working critically on regulating it. Another effect, the subsequent effect of recession is unemployment. Unemployment is still going galore. And if unemployment occurs, the because before a nation can come out of unemployment, it's always a big deal. And that is why you have not been seeing the effect of this agricultural increase in the GDP. And uh, we are import dependent in nation. If we have not learned to grow our rice, to grow our yam, that we are importing everything, and this one will see affect our foreign exchange, and our reserves will be coming down. So we need to build reserves, and a lot of things you need to do about the economy before we can feel the effect. But what I'm still saying, and I still say, is that effect of a recession is more felt even after a nation has come out of recession by families. It so takes time. It, it, it's, it's a long period. It's a, a long period, period to it's a long to recover for example a man that lost his job maybe before he can see another job he, ma he managed manually or maybe three four years he has not seen a job not that he will not see a job but
But before he see a job, that time he lost a job was with reception. But the time he was finding a job, they have come out of reception. It will take time. So, based on that statistics, let us be hopeful that with time, then uh, we are sitting gradually. Okay, let us also check the statistics for another very key sector, the electricity sector. Can we get the MBS report? Okay, for the electricity and gas and financial institution sector, it also recorded strong growth with electricity and gas growing by 35.5% compared to minus 5.04% in the first quarter of year 2017 and minus 10.46% in the second quarter of year 2016. And for financial institutions, they also grew by 11.78% in the second quarter of year 2017 compared to 0.60% in the first quarter of year 2017 and minus 13.24% in the second quarter of year 2016. Now, electricity sector, um, well, of course, another marginal increase, but the financial sector grew substantially by up to 11%, but people are still complaining, there are some people are still complaining about the lending rates, repayment pattern collaterals and all these other deals with this sector how do you want to also interpret and analyze this well um interest rate is one of the effects another effect of recession whereby we have found ourselves now it has affected a medium small uh, scale uh, entrepreneur you generate your own light no water the electricity will contribute, and to worsen the wool, there will be no fuel. And uh, all this one uh, pile up on an entrepreneur that is making a lot of people to run away. And if you need money now, you go to a bank, the interest rate is so killing that they will say the collateral, go and bring this, go and bring that. But uh, the government needs to look at interest rate, so at least to encourage the medium and small scale people and don't forget the fact that the treasury single account contributed to it. All the money this commercial bank are using, you see, the federal government has taken it away from them. And they don't know, don't know, just pay my money to treasury, say TSA account, and they have not been able to see the money to use again. And they are, at the end of the day, they are now looking for a way to generate the money by through foreign exchange and, the, and other means. Uh, also, this electricity sector is another sector that in Nigeria, although you will see that. Statistically, from 3,000 megawatt to 5,000 megawatt, and so on and so forth, the present government is trying, but has not translated really into uh, physical things that can still be seen. So, efficiency, So, they are working on it, and uh, we pray they will still work on it more so that all these statistics, statistics, bureaus, uh, SOFE, and co and co. Now, the question is. How does it translate to food on the table of a common man? How can government translate this to food now? Number one, medium and small scale entrepreneurs should be encouraged. They should be given um, uh, the way they can encourage them, like, like soft loan to small scale. They should be encouraged because they are the pillar of a nation. In this electricity, I remember Ghana uh, has a population of about Lagos. And they generated, they generate, because it's continuous, they generate enough megawatts that they can be used that can be used by them. So the government is working. They should still work more because the population of about 170 million or more, with uh, anytime they are talking about seven thousand megawatts, it makes one to laugh. The country, I mean the government should still work on that. Not on generation alone, on transmission and distribution is very, very important. All right, yes, a daybreak show, Citizens Forum on Rock City 101.9 FM this morning. We are looking at how accurate, how efficient, how visible is the statistics of exit out of recession from the country. And we have a chartered accountant with us, Treasurer Abel Kuta Chimba of uh, Industry, Abel Sima. Mr. Timothy, uh, okay. let's take this short music break and we'll come back. All right, yes, thank you for still being there. David Show on Rock City 101.9 FM, Citizens Rome, looking 
I check that uh, report of exit of recession from the Ministry of Finance and the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics. That's uh, NPS saying that Nigeria has uh, moved out of recession. And our guest, the chartered accountant, Mr. Timothy Shorunke, has just uh, told us true that when you have a consecutive negative report, obviously that is recession. And when it reverses itself, you have consecutive or more than positive report that uh, naturally, academically, uh, says you have moved out of recession. Maybe that's the point in which the MBS is looking at it. But how realistic, how accurate is it in terms of the practicality to those of you who are listening to us and to those who goes to the market or who deals with people business-wise day in, day out? That's what we are looking at this morning. We quickly uh, switch over the microphone to you at this stage. Let's get your contributions, questions, comments for our guests. But quickly, the rules are there. And one, you have to move away from the radio. Very, very important when you are putting that call through. You only have two minutes maximum for each call. If you feel you have not concluded, you can use the short code for your conclusion. The short code number is 32120. And there will be no insult, no abuse on any individual or personality as you make your comment. We will not take an unsubstantiated claim, act of propaganda, deliberate falsehood or mischief on the program and again if you are testing please ensure that you use the conventional test pattern not the current sms uh, test abbreviation it makes reading very difficult thank you zero eight zero nine eight six eight seven three four four or zero nine zero nine one four six nine six seven zero good morning uh, uh, my sister uh, good, morning. good morning, the guest in the house. Good morning. My name is um, Dr. Hong Kong from Assurance. Sir, you have spoken so well uh, as if I was in economic class 101. <laughs> you, you, you've done so well. I hope the listeners understand the point you are making, the small point, which is difficult. Recession does not mean you went to buy uh, a Lubon in the market, it was 5,000, the next day, 6,000. <laughs> 7,000. That is not recession. Mm. Recession has a particular definition. Mm. Growth rate. That growth rate does not mean what is in your pocket. Mm. It has nothing to do with your pocket. It does not have to do your purchasing power and all that. Although those are contributors. But because you are at the right extent, you are out of job and you have no work and you have no money, say recession. No, that is not the meaning of recession. And two years, right this year, I've listened to international economies discuss recession. When you come out of it, even in America, even in Europe, you don't feel it like that. People don't feel it as if when we are out of recession, everything goes back. No! It takes a very long time. And even when it improves, and people said it is okay now, you still will not feel it, even in Europe and America, because there are other factors. The word recession in an economic super say is not a, a precise sign. It's very imprecise. You take a lot of factors into before you can. It's not a precise sign like one plus one is two. When we are out of recession, so I can buy a car. No, no, you may not even buy a car for your lifetime. Not because of the recession. There are other issues. And if Nigerians understand that definition, recession is not a political term for I, I, I'm broke. No. When we know that, then it becomes easier to understand what is happening in the economy. If Nigerians don't understand what that means, we are just wasting our time. Thank and you. once we understand your definition and what it means, it has nothing to do with price of a Thank that you. Thank you, Dr. Economist. <laughs> okay, let's take another call. Good morning. Yeah. And the good morning, the resource person. My name is Ulishula Johnson. Yes, uh, the government has all, asked us all to go into farming to be able to push in this effect. But enough money has not been pumped into farming. The little that has been pumped into it, people go there to destroy it. In the name of rearing animals, this is not all the headmen that goes about destroying farms now. Even my neighbor destroys farm produce. This is what people don't think about. The person who is rearing goats near you, goats and sheep, he allowed his goats and sheep to go around and destroy your farm input. Everything you planted, these animals will consume it. Tomorrow we we'll start shouting, we don't have food, we don't have food. How many farmers do we have in the country? How many people have been encouraged to go into farming? 
the little that are willing to go, did the government make money available? Is it not in the name of politics? Are they not playing politics with it? These are things that are happening in this country. Government should look into it and be very sincere. And let me and my neighbor also be sincere with ourselves by not losing our goods and sheep to go around this way. My, 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 my plantains and cassava were destroyed by uh, goats and sheep, but not cattle. Not, no, 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 not Malu. Then tomorrow we we'll start shouting, help men, help men, help men. The little we have, let government create prison places for their yes, men. Let the local government also wake up to its responsibility by arresting these goats and sheep all around the places so that we can have at least a, a small farm in our backyard and this will put food on each and everybody's table. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, my sister, good morning, brother Dilly, how are you? Good morning. You guest in the house. Good I think good morning. I remain for that here. Thank you, Mr. I mean guest guest speaker. Good to see. Uh you have defined the session in a very simplistic manner. With all the technicalities or what have you, I think when the government is in place, the government should understand the level of the people is ruling over. So all these technicalities do not make meaning for a simple man or a market woman in Itoku. When the recession ends, there must be surplus. I mean, we should have surplus. And when you go to the market, the purchasing power too of Naira, you know, should rise. These are simple, simple things that a farmer and somebody like me will understand. Even those who are well edge we even pretend as if they don't even know all these uh, economic terms and uh, the terminology. What we want in this country is food and, you know, uh, we pump money into the economy, let people have the impact. Nobody on the street without tell you that, uh, you know, the so-called recession has ended. So it is better to appeal to the go I mean, to our government to understand the simple language of a common man. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. All right, we'll still Hello? take calls. Hello. Hello, good morning. Morning. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Adishia. Good, good morning, our guest. Okay. Our guest, you have said very easily this morning, are aligned with your submission. One man is tackling inflation two times in the state. But I want it to be realized also that we have, we have on our hands what, I, what a economic force at inflation. I, I know you under, understand it very much. Which means little money circulation as, as a result of two types of disposed on money. Just in a dollar can calibrate the right price of goods. I think the government can do better in this area by allowing money into circulation. That is, pump money which is expected in time of recession. And uh, we ask a good management. And also, let us have a good manager of our foreign exchange to bring that exchange rate and stabilize our currency. I can also agree with you, sir, that recession every takes time because it is like this also in 1984 when this same worry threw the nation out of recession. We need that same scenario. Last on performance of sectors, as you have uh, highlighted, sir, you have not factored in whether inland revenue, that is, of station, what they have done, what, what the, the, the feat they have performed there. And also, sovereign wealth account. I want some enlightenment on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's add the call more. I'm Kyle Dolumide from Abeki. Good morning, our guest in the house. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Yeah. You see, to me, I think uh, the recession we are going through now uh, is just about the quality of leadership that we are witnessing. And uh, this leadership of, um, how would I put it now? Uh, uh, been uh, not too sincere enough to own up to responsibility and even cheerfully. Um, let me tell you, uh, the term, uh, I don't know who invented recession as a term, but I believe that it's a kind of definition that is given to various groups of people throughout the world uh, based on their socioeconomic uh, status. But having said this, you can imagine um, somebody was talking about the issue of the arts men. I think he was talking rightly, and then probably I would term it as a kind of gross domestic violence that we are witnessing now in ravaging 
are proud the length and weight of this country. How can we now begin to see how we can have value for goods, value for farm produce, value for uh, what you produce in services? People have been rushing, I mean, running out of the farms now because of the, uh, this uh, political uh, gimmicks coming from one end of the country now to probably terminate farmers. So what are we now talking about? Do you think we can get out of recession in this kind of regardless uh, or thoughtless efforts of some people to probably live, I mean, get some people out of their services of farm food, I mean, apartment, farm land. Thank you very much. All right, uh, we'll move away from the telephone. Thank you, Cardi. We all have heard in economics is GDP. The Cardi just introduced one, GDV, gross domestic violence. I don't know if that has a space in the economics. Anyway, uh, Mr. Junker, your reaction. Thank you very much, all. Uh, I think I will start from Kayo de Uh What is GDP? GDP is gross domestic value, and it means the market value of all goods and services produced within a country in a particular year. So, if he talks of GDV, he's still talking of GDP. Because GDP is product, GDV is value. value. And GDP is the value of a market. So, by substitution, is still yes, right. Uh, well, the value of the goods you produce, I produce, all of us produce within an entity called Nigeria, is our GDP, and if it is growing, it will record a positive. A lot of jobs still need to be done in agriculture, in uh, electricity, as Hela mentioned, in oil and gas, and, and I think the government of the day is handling it uh, uh, head, head on. And uh, our, another caller, number four, who did not mention his name. They talk about the government should pour money, should bring out the exchange rate. Well, I think we have a capable hand, which is recognized globally, and uh, they are working on it. We pray that uh, we see a result that will bring food to the common man table. He even mentioned about Federal Revenue Service, which generated 4 trillion naira in 2017. Good. How does that one translate into government action? That money will be used for the good of all na of all uh, in the country. And uh, he said he want to know more about sovereign wealth account. Well, it's not a topic of the day, but briefly, you budget that your oil will be fifty naira. At the end of the day, you sell your oil seventy naira. That means there's already a difference between seventy naira and fifty naira. You use your fifty naira to do your budget to fund your budget. That 20 naira, you keep it for a common goal of everybody. It's not a topic today. Maybe uh, Rock City will uh, see saving for the rainy day. Saving for the rainy day. We'll bring us for that one later. Then to Mr. Fola Akin Yemi, he talk about purchasing power, he talk about appealing to government. Well, they are doing their best, but we need to be saying the way we see it so that they are being on AC. They, they, they don't know the fuel is uh, scarce. Maybe a yardstick of uh, putting the uh, Nigerian rules of statistics. But we, that are feeling the brunt, we should speak out so that they can be able to know that those who are we are leading are suffering outside. Thank you, Mr. Fola Akinyami. And to Mr. Rishola Johnson, he talked about farming. He talked about government to look into this and uh, do something. He talked about no funding for agriculture. Mr. Lushola Johnson, you are very, very correct. I can uh, realize the effort of back of industry and back of a grip. But uh, it seems if you go there cap in hand to source for fund, especially for agriculture, we always meet a brick wall most times because we have attempted, we have tried, and we observe. It's just like this money for back of a grip and back of industry are for some people. But they will make noise to let you realize it's for all. And I am aware there's an office with the vice president of Nigeria which is working very hard on ease of doing business. I am a member of ease of doing business called CIA, I'm a member of commerce, and they are really working because when we went for that brainstorming, they say, okay, leave it aside. How are we going to achieve this ease of doing business? Take only one or two blocking stone. Of ease of, of doing business in Nigeria. Let's start with it and on. And take it away. And whatever we are doing here, go straight away to the office of the vice president of Nigeria. So, 
the government of the day is working. Agriculture need funding. Agriculture need funding. And now this funding will get to the grassroots man. Because they are the one that will do the wonder and uh, that will produce. What else do I say on top of the Tonkom uh, assertion and statement? He has uh, talked well. And uh, he made me, he reminded me of uh, economic swan, no one. And uh, he has said everything. Thank you very much, Dr. Hong Kong. <coughs> I appreciate it. Let me, um, from Dr. Hong Kong and for Lucky like Emi, uh, they seem to have said one thing, though in different language. But I think Dr. Hong Kong used the, the word, how do you, no, um, I'm broke is different from the countries in recession. Any correlation? How do you explain that? Because that seems to be the point of these two people. If I say, if I'm broke, I feel I'm broke, or I say I'm broke, how does the recession affect that? What is the correlation? How do you interpret that? Recession will affect that in the sense that we have talked about inflation. Inflation is a generalized price in the of products. When there is inflation, for example, I have one thousand naira on me. And if I want to eat now, usually before now, I've been eating with 200 naira. Suddenly, because of pepper, because of oil, the price of what they used to produce food for me has increased. I will now eat with 300 naira or 400 naira. That means, instead for me to eat five times for my 1,000 naira, I can only eat like two times. It will affect my, I cannot even save again. Before now, maybe I eat four times, I save 200 naira. But when there is inflation, that I'm now eating 300, 400. I cannot eat four times again. And what I am saving, it will affect it. Um, the purchasing power will drop. And all this one are the effect, the aftermath of a reception. If government controls inflation, if government works on the general rise of prices and goods, maybe if, assuming my, my take home is still the same thing, and uh, I can't say before, and the purchasing power now, you know, increase. Then I can be able to save uh, by managing myself, uh, and uh, that one will be able to help my purchasing power. All can, are the result. Can this also be translated to what you are saying? The prices of items now have gone down, but nobody seems to be buying. If we are buying, where is the money that we are going to use to buy? Don't forget that. Capital expenditure in the nation really is very, very important. And uh, what is the percentage funding of capital expenditure in the year 2017? We think to start from there because my brother that is working in construction company, it is when they pay him that he will come home and say, okay, you take this one. But when the government is not making payments in the capital area, those who work for them, they are not being paid. How would they get money to even make, even if price come down more than that one? How would they see money to buy it? That's the problem. Okay, we'll need to take a break for the national news to come up at 10 a.m. But in the meantime, start sending those messages, your questions, either to the short code dial 32120, the Twitter handle, tweet at Rock City FM, and then the Facebook fan page, Rock City 101.9 FM. This is the first leg of Citizens Forum. On the other side of 10, we'll come to wrap things up on the second leg and last lap of Citizens Forum. Stay with us. You are still on to the daybreak show on Rock City 101.9 FM. This is the voice of the people broadcasting from the radio house at Shiro and Pekusa. Citizens from this morning, we have with us a chartered accountant, principal partner, Gwen Michelle chartered accountants, and of course, he is also the treasurer of the Abekuta Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Timothy. We are looking at the uh, indices, how accurate are those indices of Nigeria's exit of recession as proclaimed by the Federal Ministry of Finance in September last quarter of 2017. This is the first quarter of 2018. How accurate have you felt those exit projections? How long will it take you? And we heard our guest tell us, yes, in accounting on paper, once you have two consecutive negative growth, it is obvious that you are in recession. 
And when that reverse itself, when you now have positive growth consecutively, it is also, according to the books, you are out of recession, even though that may not instantly translate to money in your pocket. There are still other things, and time equally is also there that must be uh, projected, put together, so to say, before you can't say we are from your own side out of recession. It is not that uh, it, uh, it cannot happen, and it is not that it is not true. I'm talking about the statistics of the MBS. We are taking calls, questions from you. We'll continue from that line. Our guest is ready to give you answers to your questions. Yeah, my name is Peter Deconning from Adela Way. Our guest, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Mr. Adela and Atitunyo, well done. Good morning. Yes, sir. My first question goes like this. Is what is recession? So many things beg you for an answer. If you can remember, this time around, people are giving themselves so many to the lagoon. It's from part. What causes it? And how many the workers receive their salary? Is it not in the realm of recession? And we are talking today we are out of recession. Even though we stay class, which we are supposed to think that we are supposed to come down at the rate of $6,000, $7,000 that suddenly rise, but it's still at the hard side. I want you to know that a uh, success um, South is, is a journey, it's not a destination. You understand? Hello, yes. sir. Yes, yeah, go ahead, please. South is a journey, it's not a destination. If you say, if you say that we are going out of recession, I should have listened to that. But now, even my brother there, they are like enough for well, his time, for time to gain. Always go with little amount. Who said who said that to you? I don't call my time. Who said that to you, Big Daddy? I don't call my time. It's only I can't get where to buy it. All right, I think it's finished. Okay. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Please, it's good morning. I'm not with my radio set. Share. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. I guess in the studio, good morning to you. I am why I'm calling from Abel Kuta. I must sincerely appreciate you, our guest in the studio this morning. You have done very well. And uh, let me quickly say this. Uh, I'm not an economist. Mm. I'm not, though my wife is one. Mm. But I want to quickly say this about this issue of recession we are talking about. Can corruption not cause a recession? I, I don't want to believe. Now you have been saying we have uh, recession, real value. Mm. Yes, I agree. But that of Nigeria is man-made. Mm. That, that, that of Nigeria is special one. Why is it that? It is because of our peculiar nature. It is because of the peculiarity of this country. Mm. Number one, what is that? Corruption. Mm. Are we saying it is because of corruption that we're having a, a recession all over the world? But in Nigeria, the, 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 the rate at which we're investing in public food, I think it, it, is, it is unprecedented and outrageous. That is why I want to believe that of Nigeria is different from the recession we are having now uh, in, uh, in other countries. If we will stop, if we cannot stop this issue of corruption, I don't think we will, we will continue. I don't think we will get out of this uh, recession, so to say. Mm -hmm. uh, my own definition of recession, no, because mm -hmm. I agree with some of the people or some of the data that have been coming from uh, Minister of Finance and all that were out of recession. At least uh, prices of commodities in the market are now beginning to come down. If you don't tackle that issue of corruption, mm -hmm. I, I doubt in Nigeria. We can we can see what the president has been inherited from the last administration now. Mm -hmm. If you are saying, if you are saying, yes, uh, uh, former minister of agriculture, additional has done well in agriculture. Why, why, are, why are we having this problem? As far as the uh, food commodities uh, expenses is concerned. So that is just it. We are, the, the, our economy in Nigeria is cosmetic. Mm -hmm. We are really having the real economy right now. That is why approaching we're approaching two minutes, sir. That's why we're having this that we're having in the country. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello? Hello? Hello. Good morning, my sister. Good morning. Good morning, my guest. Good, good morning, sir. Uh, my brother, I just want to put it to you that is it not possible? Don't we have some experts, some technocrats that can take, you know, sit down, do a round table conference, that can take this country out of this, you know, economic mess that we have. We have been saying, okay, let us try agriculture. I mean, no, not necessarily involve a lot of things, probably, say, the mechanized one, 
going to give a lot of people some job one or two things to be doing. We're going to feed the nation. We're going to help out of the cultural problems that we have. I mean, it's just a commonsensical idea. Let us, you know, let us try this thing. Forget about this monolithic economic policy we have been having in Nigeria, which is the oil. I'm telling you, my brother, if you leave out the ex-men that could be destroying those farms, I'm telling you, we can get it right and do the needful in the agricultural sector. Let me allow other people to call. God bless you people over there. God bless Nigeria. God bless you. All right, thank you. Let's take this call. Hello. Good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. Your name? Yeah, this is Olabadi from uh, Abankoko. Go on. Yeah, when we are talking of uh, recession, I think uh, technically we have uh, been out of recession, but uh, the aftermath is we are what we are still feeling. I mean, uh, for example, the dudes have bought their goods when during the recession. I think trying to sell their goods at the normal uh, at the price that is pushing to the amount they bought it. So, uh, what I'm now seeing is, uh, you know, when we off the fan, that is going, uh, mm. just when we off it, mm. we think we're feeling the breeze mm. until we stop apparently. Or oh, let's, for example, I can just switch off uh, uh, an engine that is hot. Mm. Is the, 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 the hotness will be reducing gradually. Mm. So, but what we, I'm, 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 I'm just uh, begging our government. Is just to help us uh, in the, the some there are some sectors that that that, that are pushing the effect, mm -hmm. like the agriculture sector and the oil sector, and those two sectors are very important. But look at what the, the Fulani people are doing to the people are now uh, afraid of going to farming. Mm -hmm. Then secondly, the the oil the the the, 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 the oil uh, first cutting to see on mm -hmm. last December. So all these things I see, I see, I see. I add it to the, the, the uh, that's not making the, the effect uh, uh, show. I mean, uh, so that's that's just my. All right, that's thank that's you, my, thank you. Thank we'll you. take a call more and the messages and tweets. Yeah. We got this one from Fona Akinyebi Bar down. Let the government stop all this techno technical jargons until the living standard of people improves. Nobody can convince the people that recession is over. The government should stop deceiving the masses. Fola Akinyemi sends that message. And then we got a message here from Akim Shomade from Ladiria Belta. What is your advice for the government on the issue of granting loan to small scale industry? That's a question from Akim. Then we got this one from Kola from Abelkuta. When PMB was campaigning, he made so many promises to Nigerians that a lot of things. But on getting to power, he said there was no money to fulfill his promises. Do you think PMB is lying to Nigerians? Kola from Abelkuta is asking that question. And then for comments on our Facebook fan page, we got this one from Adewali Shobowali. Good morning, sir. Like one of the uncles said, all this is just grammar. Let's look at the minimum wage vis-a-vis -vis the value of the dollar. Since the Nigerian economy is a basically import-dependent one, do you know that sellers of commodities are now operating on marginal profits, yet they are hardly getting buyers? I don't believe Nigeria should be recessed. In other words, if our government were to do the right thing, Nigeria should be better for it. For the tweets via the Twitter handle, we got this one from Yemi Da Vinci. Mr. Sherunke, can these headsmen clashes and recurrent flooding in the middle belt be contributing factors to recession and high prices of goods? That's a question from Yemi Da Vinci. And more tweets still coming from him. This government said it will end fuel scarcity by December. But here we are still with it. The government is skilled in propaganda and not really doing real work. So I don't believe what they say they have done in agriculture. The present government has not been proactive in any estimation to use the opportunity of recession to grow the non-oil economy enough. Instead, they were using our forex to defend the Naira. In my estimation, the only reason Nigeria exited recession is because of the rise in global oil prices. Good morning, Mr. Shurunke. What effect do you think the two months of fuel scarcity will have on our GDP? Does it have the capacity to take us back to recession? That's still a question from Yemi Da Vinci. Please explain, what is the difference all right, uh, Mr. Chonke, let's take uh, your reactions for each one of these issues. Billionaire, the addition of 
talk about unemployment increasing on the rise, which I think the uh, government of the day is tackling. And uh, unemployment is uh, one of the aftermath effects of recession. Uh, Yemi Da Finchi, well, you have really raised a lot of questions. You ask me what is real income and money income. Uh, well, and uh, in the course of uh, your answering, you say we should look, we should put attention on real income, the money income, though you fail to give me the definition. Anyway, Yemi Da Vinci, you asked about husband contribution to reception. Hmm. Well, and uh, you talk about first scarcity to end in December. What if with the two months Fred have on reception? Hmm. Uh, reception is consecutive to or more dwindling, decline, coming down in GDP. And GDP is a measurement of uh, market value of goods and services. The market value of goods and services are already in decline in these past two months. Uh, but, uh, well, it's not to be taken in isolation because you will not be surprised by the time the Nigeria Bureau of Statistics are releasing the first quarter of the 2018 uh, GDP figure, it might be high because what came down in the supply of fuel might be uh, compensated from other, other, other sectors. So let's look out for it. And um, at the Malaysia Wale, talk about grammar, it's all about this, and uh, we should look at minimum wage. Ordinarily, there should be increase in wages uh, when we are coming out of recession. Yes, you are very, very correct. But this recession of 18, let us explain further. I go to a cooperative to borrow 1,000 naira. That means I have a negative of 1,000 naira. Are we following? Now, after I've already paid my 1,000 naira, I now have 1 naira with the cooperative. That means when I borrow money from the cooperative, I am a debtor. And by the time I finish paying, I have 1 naira. Although, marginally, I am no more a debtor, but uh, the 1 naira I have. You are still buoyant with them. I cannot say I am buoyant. That's exactly how this recession is. The fact is, you are no longer in debt. I'm no longer in debt. But not that I'm not financially. You cannot say you have money. Uh -huh, still. So, uh, Akim Chumade talk about granting loan to small scale industry. Honestly, it's one of the um, solution to reception. Because the backbone of an economy is always on these small scale people. They need government support, government grant. And uh, in this grant, is in the form of capital. Not only capital, it's in the form of infrastructure. For example, if government can go to my village and give them electricity day, all this weather, all these people selling cold ice water, they will move from town to the village. So infrastructure too should be improved upon. Kola talk about PMB not lying. He might not be lying because we don't get there with them. But according to them, what they see is more than what they thought they will see. So, and they are telling us that they are working. Let us believe on them. For Laki Yemi, talk about technical jargon should be stopped. Well, it is technical jargon that will help us to be able to come to actuality. It is when they say this is this, and it's our duty like we are doing now to tell them, well, it might be like that on paper, but uh, uh, please, what can turn food to the table? Common man does not understand this thing. You have gone ahead, you have used your yardstick, but please, how will this thing be able to turn to food to common man? And exactly that's what we are doing. We are saying it the way we see it, and we know they will be listening. Mustafa from Abadou talk about black inability. Mustafa, I love your philosophical talk. You talk like fella talk like fella and i agree with you black inability is because we are black and it's affecting most of what we are doing and that's why we are going to give a home grown approach recession is a global thing it does not only affect nigeria but there is already a way black world. A black world. there is already a way nigeria will give its own solution on lap of day from about to talk about agriculture two things agriculture and oil uh, that it should be improved to cushion the effect you are very correct because uh, oil 
price is being controlled internationally. We might not have control over it. You wake up tomorrow, it comes to one dollar. Well, there's nothing we can do. That is why we need to now look at agriculture that within our means, how do we improve it? And in improving it, a lot of things are coming up in which the government of the day uh, tackle. Um, a caller who does not mention his name say, Is it not possible to take Nigeria out of recession? That's what we are saying that uh, based on Nigeria broad statistics, that marginally Nigeria has come out of recession with 0.55 percent. We were being uh, the GDP had been in negativity for two or more quarters previously, but at September 2007, marginally with a little less than one percent, 0.55 percent increase in GDP, it has taken Nigeria out of recession, and we just pray that Nigeria do not go back to recession. Mr. Waid from Abekuta talk about corruption. Hmm. Well, <laughs> this is a real issue that uh, Nigeria is tackling, and I can remember the president yesterday saying that it will take continual effort for Nigeria to be fighting corruption. That is not a thing that it can come now and fight. That we are still going to be fighting corruption, my brother. What is this corruption? Corruption is a situation whereby what belongs to 170 million Nigeria is in the pocket of only five individuals. Well, how do we tackle corruption? Let's internalize some things. Let policy be in place. That one may be to help us. And don't forget the fact that this corruption of 18, when they corruptly enrich themselves, all this money they take away will not be seen. I will be hidden. I will not be part of the calculation of the GDP. All this money corruptly taken away will not be part. It will not be, cannot be seen. It will not be part of the market value of goods and services. After all, those who correctly enrich themselves are they producing anything? Are they producing any goods? Are they producing any services? But they are the one that have most of the money, and that money are not part of the GDP. You can uh, by establishing a more realistic policy and nationalizing most of our corruption can be tackled. And the big daddy from Abela way asked the question, what is recession? Well, <sighs> recession is a situation whereby, you know, January to March is a quarter, April to June is second quarter, July to September is the third quarter, October to December is fourth quarter. In every year, of uh, we have four quarters. A recession is a situation whereby, it, 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 if, if there is negative GDP January, positive, I mean in the first quarter, positive in the second, uh, negative in the third, uh, positive in the, that's not recession. But in the situation whereby, first quarter, negative, second quarter, negative, third quarter, negative, it starts from two or more. Negative GDP in a year, in more than two or more quarter, that is where we have recession. Messages. Okay, calls. Ah. Mr. Shorun Katimochi, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. I am Pastor Shola Mark in the calling from Mobu Kingdom. I go with Abel Kuta here. Dear lady, you will please permit me to share my thoughts on the front burner issue this morning. And that is whether Nigeria is out of recession or not. You see, it is quite interesting this morning that uh, our parliamentarians are now turning into economists. If I may ask her, Sir. What is recession? I, I, although I am not a, I am not an economist, I am a pastor. But as a layman, recession is simply means simply means temporary decline in economic activity or prosperity. For the federal government claiming today that Nigeria is out of recession is far, far, far from it. For me, there is no point sugar coating a bitter cola. Let us call it spade a spade. There is no corresponding positive effects on the lives of Nigerians. There is still joblessness among you. Poverty is still, is still up. Epileptic mm -hmm. power supply. Goods and services are imported from abroad. Go around our, go around our website today. Go to Lagos and see that almost all our petrol stations are empty. And we are saying that we are out of recession. Mm -hmm. Thanks so very much. God bless Rossi FM. And God bless Nigeria in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you too. Hello. Nigeria is technically out of recession. But what about the effects of money that is not in circulation? and the minimum wage remaining the same. Billionaire Ajisha Fair, I'm very sorry, I couldn't have read that out. Akinde Ebenezer, 
the recession is over, but it will take a while before we recover. There are four phases to business cycle theory, and from recession to recovery, from it to prosperity and boom, government should do the needful to alleviate the effect. Abiyada Shegun also tweeted, Recession should be defined as the artificial problem that is created by looters and corrupt politicians to make life miserable for the masses. That's a tweet from Abiyada Shegun. Yami Da Vinci tweeted again, Mr. Shurunke, people won't eat GDP. I agree totally with Pastor Shola Makinde. Even in the recent growth in capital markets in Nigeria, it's due to portfolio foreign investors who came to make quick bucks and not real growth. We need new indices. Abiyad Oshago tweeted again, Nigeria is technically out of recession, but the masses are in deep recession. No money, no business, no electricity, not even good road. Those are the tweets we have for now. All right, uh, Mr. Shonke, before you go into those things uh, one by one, from the submission so far, it appears there are two understandings, two interpretations of what exit of out of recession, what it means to people. Those that are interpreting us until we begin to feel it in our pocket, until we begin to see it in the values of goods and services on the street. And those who believe that on papers, economies, indices, you collect data and you arrive at that and you have to wait. Which of these two interpretations do you think is correct or is accurate for this discussion? Well, I, I think uh, we cannot take one and leave the other. Uh, there is unemployment now, and there had been unemployment in the past. We are just looking at what the paper is talking about uh, the GDP. Although, you mean that we say we will not eat the GDP. It's very, very correct, but it will help us to make some certain decision. Like presently now, the present government has agreed that this unemployment now, if it left unchecked, it will be wrong. So that means they know that there is unemployment. And how do they know there is unemployment? If there are no statistics from Nigerian Bureau for statistics like this, although GDP is always the technical, technical is a jargon. True, yes. But uh, as this jargon is being uh, shown out, it will be able to, uh, the government will be able to know that uh, this thing they are showing out, how would it will help them to plan and work on how to alleviate uh, the pre so to, to try solution to the Nigerian problem. Like uh, the recession time now, when we are talking about that, this has been very difficult all along. And when we are now saying we have come out of recession, th things are still are still difficult. So definitely we cannot say, okay, put the food on the table. What are the procedure? For example, a man that is working and uh, he has almost 10 uh, members of the family. His uh, income cannot carry it. You need to now sit down and say, oh, what do I do now? How do I feed these 10 people? So that is why all this GDP or whatever, whatever I have for, so that the government can be able to use it and say, okay, now, see the effect of this agriculture of recent. See the way government have been talking about agriculture, 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 agriculture. If the GDP, if the Nigeria Bureau of uh, 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 Statistics have not been shown now to let us know that this research, so how do we go out of it? How would they be able to know that let us... Your God, you know, not going, you know, I mean, um, put and cut you up so that it can come at part that we have neglected our cocoa, our granite, our whatever, whatever in the past. So, all this one we cannot uh, take one and leave the other. All of them need to be considered, and the resultant effect must be to put the table to food on the table of a common man. All this one we are saying now from now till uh, tomorrow, for till eternity. If somebody does not get a job, is unemployed, you will still be feeling the pinch. If there is a reduction in the purchasing power, people will still be feeling the pinch. If there is increase in inflation, people will still be feeling the pinch. But when all these things are brought under control, how do they bring it to under control? When they wake up in the morning, okay, what is our inflation rate today? Ah, what is our foreign exchange today? Oh, Nigeria, Nigeria is uh, already going down. What do we do? Okay, inflation rate, how do we bring it down? Agriculture, they have always started to tell us that okay, uh, is it increasing? Is it coming down? Okay, let's see. see how many megawatts have you generated? What's our target? And then, okay, what is it? Okay, what is the price of oil today? We cannot control that. Uh, when that one has come down, uh, what do we do now to be able to uh, make our budget uh, 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 to what we or when it is high? Oh, this one that is high, how do we spend the SS? Do we keep it? Do we share it among the governors? 
Or what do we do about it? So we need this Nigerian bureau statistics to be able to take decision and say, okay, how do we be fed? Which one do we take off? Which one do we low? Which one is too high? Which one is too small? I agree to people. People want solution to all their problems. They want to see the effect of this thing. Those who are unemployed want to be employed. Those who have suffered from inflation that they cannot buy things that they want to buy because of their purchasing power is low. They want their purchasing power to be raised. Those small and medium scale enterprises people, they need capital to be able to, capital and infrastructure, to be able to pursue all the business they are doing. Since when they are seeing all that one, and of course, the current moment. I have my money to buy fuel, no fuel to buy. People want to see that, okay, you have come out of recession, you have, we are, I won't buy fuel, I will enter affinitation, I buy fuel. Then they can be able to say, yes, yeah, we have come out of recession. Why are they looking for, they hold their money, they cannot see fuel. So they are still feeling the one solution, and the government will render that solution. Okay, I'll add the messages that I have here via the short code down. Ikechuku Olisat, a man who doesn't know where the rain starts beating him, probably will not go when the rain will stop. Only helpless Nigerians taste the bitterness of hardship in this country, while the politicians and lawmakers are yet to feel the pains, because if they do, they must find a way out of the crisis. So let us stop pretending. Obrupi from Iliwe also sent a message. Our guest, sir, I want to believe that the recession is only for the poor masses, so long our money is revolving within the political class alone. That's a message from Obrupi. Then lastly, from Kayode Olumide, if this government of Buhari cannot passionately take us out of the recession, some people thought it was not created by him or his government. Can he also be patient to leave office for somebody with the right method and knowledge now? That's from Kayodi Ududi. All right. Uh, if you want to take any reaction, let right, we just take uh, two, a call more. Mr. Ashanka, do you have anything to say on those new messages coming in? Uh, well, uh, there are always responses to every question. Mm -hmm. Kayodi Ududi, well, uh, there are personal solutions. There are, let us be prayerful. Obulu Kopi. Money in the hand of politicians. Yeah? I think we are talking about corruption. Yeah? There's always a solution to that. A solution is a policy making and nationalization of it. Uh, Ikeshuku talk about let's stop pretending. We are not pretending. We are talking reality. There are statistics that we are coming out. But it has not turned to money. It has not turned to anything. It's not, from, mean, it's, uh, uh, not true. Uh -huh. So, MOK Aeto will talk about put freedom. Uh, well, government is working that. Then, uh, oh no, I want nobody. Let's be patriotic from this go government where the government is patriotic enough and they are showing out information that can help us. And your life, the effect of money not in circulation. That's a big problem. The money is not in circulation, but it's in private hand. So, and I think we are still talking about corruption and the way out. Akindi Ebenezer takes time to recover government do needful. And that's exactly what we are saying. All we have been talking since morning is the government should do the needful. And if you don't tell them, they don't know, and that's why we are telling the government to do the needful so that the effect of coming out of recession can be felt by all. Abiola Shea going to talk about Nigeria out of recession, but citizen not yet out. It's very correct. Nigeria is yet out of recession, but citizen. And that's what we are saying that it should turn food to the table of citizen. You mean that finishing talk more that, uh, well, I agree with you. Realistically, we are going to come out of it. Mr. Achonke, because uh, we have uh, less than two minutes. Now, let me have this uh, final one from me. You are an accountant. You are also, you can be described as somebody who is on the street. As in, you do this MSME business, so you interact more than those in government. From this two angle, your experience as somebody who interacts with the small businesses and an accountant, somebody who reads the figures, who the figures. How soon do you think Nigerians will begin to feel and see this as it of recession? Well, to be realistic, because I'm not God, I will say very soon. Because our rice production has not been like it is before. And the the, the government of the day is working critically on this agriculture. I just pray for them so that it can turn to reality and the citizen will be the thing is really tough really, but very soon we shall become, we shall come out of it. 
Uh, we have um, a few tweets here before we bring it under wraps. Eniola Egbekunle tweeted, The price of commodities still remains high in the market. Unemployment rate is increasing every day and the masses are struggling for survival. Abel also tweeted, Honestly and sincerely, Nigeria is still in recession until we feel it physically mm -hmm. and not technically. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ayuade Shurunke also tweeted, Is the recovering economy strong enough to withstand an increase in the minimum wage? All right, we thank everybody who joined us via all the platforms and those of you that I know are there who just patiently sat down and enjoyed it by listening. We say big thank you to all of you and of course to our guests for calling you and responding. Mr. Timothy Eribemi, Shorunke Principal Partner, uh, Bemi Shorunke Chattered and Qatar, of course, the treasurer, Abekuta Chambers of Commerce, Mice and Industry. We again say thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Dele Ayoto is my own name. I say God bless you all. God bless Nigeria and God bless Rock City. And I am Chene Ibon. Thank you so much for always staying tuned. Good morning. <laughs>